Welcome to Slain Excel Dragons video number 17. Hey, these are the videos that accompany this book. We're still in chapter 5 talking about formulas and functions. Hey, in this video, we got to talk about mixed cell references. Oh, but we've already been talking about that, but now we got to talk about orientation of assumption tables or formula inputs. We'll also see a template for a projected income statement here. All right, let's go over to our Excel workbook. As always, it's the Excel is Fun start file that you can download from the link below the video. All right, so we want to do a budget or a projected income statement. Now, before we talk about our formula inputs in an assumption table, I first want to go back to something we talked about a few videos ago. That little green triangle, if I zoom in here, that little green triangle, what is it? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's error checking. If you go over to formulas, error checking, it's parallel to spell check in Word. Now, we all know spell check in Word doesn't always work. Well, error checking is even worse. And watch this. If I click, so I click in the cell, I click on this drop down, and it says emit, uh, formula emits adjacent cells. Now, it's trying to be polite. For example, if I had actually, because we're going to add up all these expense, if I had actually done this, then we would have emitted an adjacent cell. I'm going to click Escape and F2. But of course, a lot of templates have exactly this situation. Some typed in number, and then we need to add all the numbers below it. So you don't want to get tricked into thinking that, um, oh, I made a mistake, and then believe it, right? There are lots of other situations, at least for me, where I, I just get annoyed by these green triangles, because it's not sophisticated enough Error checking is not sophisticated enough to understand really uh, the complexities of how people set up formulas in their spreadsheets. So just as we saw a couple videos ago, I'm going to turn this off, off, file, options. By the way, the keyboard shortcut, I still remember it from, you know, like Excel 1997. You used to go to the tools and then options, alt T-O still opens options. So older alt keyboard shortcuts still work. All right, now I'm going to go down to formulas, and I'm going to say down here, just uncheck it. Just uncheck it. Whew, now they're all gone. Now they're not going to pop up anymore. All right, so that's your uh, personal choice. All right, now on to assumption tables. Now here it is. We have revenue, January through June, and we have some expenses. Oh, and then the accountants in our accounting department looked at past data and estimated for each expense that we typically have from past data, hey, for every for expense one, for every one dollar of revenue, five pennies are going to be used up for this particular expense. We express that as five percent. We multiply five percent times a thousand in this cell right here, and it tells us exactly what our estimate based on past accounting data, what our estimate for expense 1 will be. You would then repeat the process. So for expense 2, you'd calculate those based on this 7.5, expense 3 based on 15.5. All right, so the question is, do we use this assumption table or this one? That's the whole point of this video. Now let's just take a look. Let's make our base formula equals the revenue times our is it this cell or is it this one? Now I'll just cut to the chase here, but then I'm going to prove to you that this is true. The rule, this is the rule. Are our labels vertical? If they are, then the labels in the assumption tables also have to be vertical. Anytime you get vertical, meaning the labels, and then the labels down here are the opposite, horizontal in our case. And, and thus the formula inputs are horizontal, forget it. If that's the situation, you cannot use mixed cell references. It's only when they're vertical, vertical, or horizontal, horizontal, meaning the labels in the formula table are parallel to the labels in the assumption table or formula inputs. Ultimately, it's the formula inputs. Formula inputs have to be orientated the same direction as the labels in your table. Now, the problem is, is that a lot of um, templates in the working world and in the textbooks that I teach from, 
they do this. They set it up this way, and then they have their assumption table this way. So guess what? This means, unfortunately, that this is what you're doing every time. You're locking it, and this is actually the way they teach it. They say, OK, create that formula and copy it over. And then create the next formula and copy it over, and hitting F4 each time. That means your formula creation time is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 times longer than it should be. And it's all because what? You don't know mixed cell references. You don't know how to orientate the assumption table. All right, so that's a drag there. Unf but again, lots of people do it that way. So we're going to be smarter. Vertical, vertical. They are parallel. We can do mixed cell references. All right, this times this. I ask the two questions. Want to copy it down? Do I want it locked on January? Yes, I'm copying down across the numbers, so I hit F4 twice. Row references locked. When I move this way, does the blue box need to move to February? You betcha. Across the columns, that means no dollar sign in front of that column reference. Next cell references, two questions. Same. We asked two questions of the first cell reference, same two questions. And by the way, why are there two questions? There's only two directions in Excel. And that's why there's two questions. Going down, do I want it locked? No way. When I go from expense 1 to expense 2, I want green box to move. No dollar sign in front of the number. When I copy it this way, across the columns, do I want it to move? No way. I don't want the green box to move, so I hit F4123 times. And that formula will work. Control Enter. Drag it down, drag it over. My cursor happens to be right here, so I'm just going to, instead of control period, period, I'm going to click right there and hit F2. And I'm going to admire the efficiency in which we created this table. Now again, um, that just is a lot faster. I like doing creating formulas six times faster than the majority of, of other people who would create this table. Now I want to I want to just take a moment here and think back what we've done so far in this formula chapter. We've learned things like what we just learned set up the assumption table correctly. We learned that anytime a number can vary, you put it in a cell and refer to it with a cell reference. We learned about uh, different types of cell references, in this case mixed cell references. And in the book, if we go take a look in the book, I nicely summarize each one of these important uh, topics as we go through the book. So if I um, go to page, so far, I, b by the time you get to page 188, there's already 30 rules, but this summarizes everything you need to know about creating Excel, actually it's called the Excel Efficiency Robust Rules. This one's about efficient formula creation. So in one little succinct rule, it tells you what you need to know about being really efficient in creating formulas. And at the end of the book, yes, I don't know, page 527 in the appendix, Excel Efficiency Robust Rules, there they are all listed. So when you read the book or watch the videos, you then go through these rules at the end, and there's 43 efficient, uh, robust rules. You go through them all, they're nicely summarized, and it kind of summarizes the entire book in 43 rules. All right, uh, next video we are going to, actually I'm going to Alt-Tab. We're going to talk about a little bit more about assumption tables. We're going to talk about what happens if you're doing what-if analysis and you're continually changing these. There's something called Scenario Manager for what-if analysis that is just amazing. We'll see you next video.